Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on voltage gated ion channels. And in this video, what we're going to do is uh, start our discussion of voltage gated calcium channels. Okay, um, so the first uh, the first division of voltage gated calcium channels was the division of voltage gated calcium channels into three different types. So voltage gated calcium channels, I'll just put. And they were initially divided into three types. The L type, the N type, and uh, the T type. And basically they, they did this. They did this on the basis of uh, patch clamping experiments. Uh, so what they did is they uh, took out bits of membrane uh, with um, with voltage gated calcium channels in, and they found that depending on where depending on where they um, took this um, piece of membrane from, the uh, channel had slightly different properties. So let's put in a voltage gated calcium channel in here. And basically, what they did is they um, they stimulated this by uh, putting by depolarizing the electrical potential across it. And of course, uh, the whole setup of a patch camp is that you have a volt uh, that you have a battery here, uh, which holds the electrical potential difference across this um, membrane at minus sixty-five. But when you um, when you use a stimulating electrode to temporarily depolarize this intracellular aspect of the membrane. Um, then what happens is that the voltage-gated calcium channel opens and um, it allows calcium to move from the extracellular to the intracellular domain. Uh, so when you move calcium into the cell, what you're going to need to also do, if this battery is going to maintain the electrical potential difference at minus 65 millivolts, then it's going to move ne a negative charge, electrons, also from the extracellular to the intracellular domain. So if we put an ammeter in there, uh, then we can measure the movement of electrons from the extracellular to the intracellular domain, and basically that movement of electrons must match the movement of um, positive charge in the form of calcium ions. Now, of course, there's two positive charges for every uh, single calcium that you move. So, if you move a million electrons over here, that will indicate that there are 500,000 calcium ions moving through. Okay? Uh, so, um, Basically, it just means that we, from this movement of electrons, from this current that we have here, uh, we can work out the uh, current of calcium going through this channel. And basically, um, what you see is, is if you do this experiment, so let's plot time, and uh, we'll plot current uh, going from the intracellular to the extracellular domain. Basically. In fact, we'll plot it going from the extracellular to the intracellular. That's more intuitive, maybe. All right. Okay. Uh, so uh, initially, if we just start the experiment, if we start this um, the stopwatch and haven't yet applied the stimulating electrode, then the current will be zero because this is held at uh, the electrical potential difference across this membrane will be minus 65 millivolts, and basically that will mean that everything's perfectly in equilibrium and there's no net current going through this circuit. So it starts off at zero, and then what will happen is that you apply this stimulating electrode, and what that's going to do is it's going to draw off negative charge, so it's going to draw off electrons uh, into it, and that will make the intracellular compartment less negative. So it will raise the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment and make it more positive, which will mean that overall the difference in electrical potential from the extracellular to the intracellular will become more positive. So it will raise maybe. And if we raise it up to minus 40 millivolts, or it might not actually be that. It might, you know, you're, you're going to have to raise it to different levels. And that's going to be part of our experiment to see, you know, how easy is it to stimulate these electrical potentials, what uh, these um, voltage-gated calcium channels, what, um, what potential do you need to raise this up to, what voltage across the membrane do you need to raise it up to, how much do you need to depolarize the membrane in order to actually activate the channel. But basically, what we'll see is that the... Um, signaling electrode, uh, the stimulating electrode rather, is going to uh, depolarize this membrane and uh, what the, the voltage clamp isn't going to like that, this battery isn't going to like that. As soon as that happens, it will move elect uh, electrons from the extracellular to the intracellular uh, compartment to try and make the intracellular compartment more negative again and restore the electrical potential difference across this membrane to minus 65. So what you'll see initially is the movement of a we're measuring current from extracellular to intracellular, and we're going to move electrons, basically. So we're going to move negative charge. So we'll have a, it going down like this. So we'll see a little spike like that. And if you've been watching my previous videos, you might be wondering, why is he now drawing it down rather than up? All I've switched is I've switched it from 
doing current going from intracellular to extracellular to current going from extracellular to intracellular because I think it's slightly more intuitive this way around. Okay, so now if this electrical if we if we um, raise the electrical potential difference temporarily uh, across the membrane to high enough values, uh, then it will activate this uh, voltage gated uh, calcium channel basically, and uh, you will. Um, when the voltage gate, if you do, if you do raise this electrical potential up to the threshold potential for the voltage gated calcium channel, uh, then what you'll see is you'll see that calcium will move uh, from the extracellular to the intracellular compartment, and that to balance that, the uh, battery will have to move negative charge from the extracellular to the intracellular compartment. So again, what you'll see is a great is a current of electrons moving from extracellular to intracellular. So you'll see something that maybe looks like this, basically. Okay. And the way in which these, uh, these um, three types were discerned is that you found voltage-gated calcium channels. Uh, one, uh, the first uh, distinguishing factor between T-type and then L and N-type is that L and N-type calcium channels have a high, um, high threshold potential. So you need to raise this electrical uh, potential difference across the membrane to quite pos uh, to you know much higher uh, levels than you would uh, in, in order to stimulate these L and N-type voltage-gated calcium channels than you would in order to stimulate the T-type calcium channels. So these T-type channels are what is are what is known as uh, low voltage gated, uh, low voltage activated rather low voltage activated, or LVA, low voltage activated, whereas the L and N type uh, were high voltage activated, high voltage activated. Another feature was that um, if you look at the actual uh, currents here, if you look at the currents for these different types of channels, uh, then um, Remember what this means. This is telling us that the movement, of, this shows us the movement of electrons, basically, from the extracellular to the intracellular. So the more negative this is, the more electrons you are moving from the extracellular to the intracellular. You are moving electrons to balance the calcium. Uh, so the more electrons you are moving, the more calcium is moving through this channel. So, uh, basically, the more negative this is, the higher is the conductance of calcium through this voltage-gated calcium channel. And basically, what you see is that if you plot this for T-types, uh, you get uh, something that looks very like this. It's a very, very short... Um, it's only open for a very, very short period, basically. That's where the T comes from. Tine, uh, transient is um, one of the interpretations of what that T-type means. It's also, you also have at all times much lower actual conductances than you have for L-type. So if you plot it for an L-type, what you might observe is something that looks more like this. So you get a much longer lasting uh, conductance of calcium through that L-type channel uh, when you... Um, when you uh, stimulate it to open, and you also get higher conductances, so larger or longer, whichever ones, whichever you want to interpret the L as. But basically, it's going to be open for longer, and when it's open, it's going to allow more calcium to move through. Okay, and N type is somewhere in between. It's open for a reasonably long amount, a large amount of time, and uh, it also um, has a high conductance. It's somewhere like that. Okay, so that's one of the distinguishing features between these original three, dis, uh, three types of uh, calcium channels that were uh, found. And uh, the other uh, distinguishing feature is that they're found in different places. Uh, so T-type you can find in the heart, uh, specifically in the, um, in the nodes of the heart. So if, for instance, in the sinoatrial node, they're incredibly important there. Um, you can find L-type in uh, skeletal muscle, skeletal muscle, and lots of other forms of muscle as well, uh, just a simple example, and N uh, you find in your own uh, neuron, so in neuronal type is the interpretation of what N stands for. Another distinguishing factor between these three types were that they were uh, blocked by different pharmacological agents, i.e. you could block the conductance of calcium, which you'd see on a patch clamp experiment. So if you, if you throw certain pharmacological agents over this voltage-gated calcium channel, it will basically block this conductance of calcium, i.e. you won't see anything when you actually stimulate it. It won't, you'll see obviously the, um, 
the, the peak that comes about because of the stimulating electrode, but afterwards you will see just a flat line, basically. And different pharmacological agents work on different channels, and that was another way in which they were able to discern that the, there were different types of voltage-gated calcium channel, that there wasn't just one. So uh, there are some very famous pharmacological agents that block L-type calcium channels. So L-type, uh, uh, the agents which block L-type uh, calcium channels are, um, the, there are three main classes. There are the dihydropyridines, which are very, very famous, dihydropyridines, of which an example is um, uh, nifedipine. That's a very uh, famous example. Uh, then there are the... Um, the, um, um, so these are all agents which, if you put them on these uh, voltage-gated um, calcium channels, these L-type voltage-gated calcium channels, what you get, basically, is a block of the conductance of um, calcium into the cell. Uh, another, um, another important uh, dihydropyridine, which doesn't uh, yet have, um, it's not uh, clinically used yet, so it hasn't got as fancy a name, is called BAY-K8644, basically. So any drug that has a name like that, uh, you can instantly assume that it isn't clinically used, uh, but it is in a, of experimental importance. So both of these, if you have an L-type calcium channel in your patch clamp, and if you put these drugs, these pharmacological agents, on that uh, L-type cal voltage-gated calcium channel, it will block um, it will block the uh, calcium conductance. So when, if you do the uh, patch clamp experiment again, you won't see uh, this uh, this influx of calcium. You won't see this movement of electrons. You'll see no current because you won't need a current to compensate the calcium movement because you're no longer moving calcium. Okay, so dihydropyridines are an important class of pharmacological agent which block these, and here are two examples. And by, by the way, the na this name, um, the, the reason they're called dihydropyridines is because of their chemical structures. They all have um, dihydropyridine rings um, uh, in them somewhere, uh, in their structure somewhere. Okay, uh, so uh, next, another important uh, uh, example is um, verapamil. Uh, Verapamil, uh, which is a um, Verapamil, which is a um, well, is it a phenyl alkyl amine? I think Verapamil is a phenyl alkyl amine, phenyl alkyl amine, and then the f so that's another important class, and I think there's another one called Galopamil, uh, which is very similarly. Uh, similar in structure. So those are two pharmacological agents which will block L-type calcium channels, and they are phenyl al alkyl amines. And then the final one is uh, a benzothiazepine, I believe. Benzothiazepine. And do not confuse those that with benzodiazepines. Uh, benzothiazepine, again, it's uh, classif these are all classified uh, depending on their um, on their chemical structures, and a, be, be, uh, a, benz, a benzothiazepine is diltiazem, basically. So these are all very famous drugs, nifedipine, verapamil, and diltiazem. They all have huge amounts of uses in cardiovascular medicine. But basically, as far as we're concerned, all these names are just agents which, if you put them onto L-type calcium channels, uh, will block this effect that you see with the patch clamp.